afternoon, good day, everybody, and welcome to today's seminar presentation on the Animal Welfare Group Nigeria. Uh, we have our presenter, Dr. Surya, in our midst from Malaysia. Nice to see you. We appreciate her for uh, finding time to present her research work to our group. So I'm Oluwa Shun Iyasiri. I'm a senior lecturer in the Department of Animal Physiology, Federal University of Agriculture, Abel Kuta. For the program, I'll, we have the moderator who is Dr. Matthew Weto. So I would like to hand over to Dr. Matthew to moderate today's uh, seminar presentation for us. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Or Mrs. Uh, Yasere. I uh, once again I want to welcome uh, of today's webinar is a senior research officer in the Institute of Tropical Agriculture and Food Security at the University Petra, Malaysia. Presenter is a senior research officer in the Institute of Tropical Agriculture and Food Security at the University Putra, Malaysia. She received a PhD from the University Putra, Malaysia in animal veterinarian. Her research focus include nutritional and uh, metabolic regulation of gene expression in livestock animals. She is, uh, she is currently investigate, investigating the genetic network relevant to commercial brella response to heat stress. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome with me, Dr. Surya Ramia. She's going to be presenting on effects of zinc oxide nanoparticles on its stress protein genes in Brella chickens under its stress condition. Dr. Surya Remia, you are welcome into our midst. You can start your presentation. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Matthew. It was a very warm welcoming uh, for me. Thank you so much. And thank you so much to Dr. Olua because uh, she has invited me to present for this uh, so-called uh, short uh, seminar. So now I'd like to talk about the uh, title of my presentation is on the effect of uh, zinc oxide nanoparticle on uh, heat stress uh, protein genes in broiler chicken subjected to heat stress. So, um, uh, since uh, the participants are coming over, so I just want to have an uh, interaction with the participants uh, rather than me talking. Uh, just want to have an idea about uh, how many of you all has actually studied on the heat stress protein genes in broilers. Um, maybe um, I can see through the chat or something. Maybe they will drop that in the chat box. And... Oh, oh, okay. Right. So, so now, I'll, uh, before I proceed with my uh, study, I would like to talk about animal welfare, which I feel that, uh, Dr. Oluwa, you're very much into uh, animal welfare, right? So I would like to create an awareness about the research of uh, animal welfare that we discussed previously in our previous uh, two weeks conference on ISA 2021. So what we found is that uh, they are very limited studies on uh, uh, relation with animal welfare. So animal welfare is ensuring a good quality of life for animals is a matter of concern. In Malaysia, Malaysia has had a national animal welfare since uh, 1953, but uh, it was under enforced. So in 2019, following calls from uh, animal protectionists from animal uh, welfare associations, Malaysia passed a new Animal Welfare Act. So this Animal Welfare Act monitors the work of animal protection associations, uh, it provides a, a license for all individuals or businesses that use the animals and it prohibits the uh, breedings of animals for research and teaching and also it bans of shooting uh, stray dogs and many more. So animal welfare is actually associ associated with three factors which are the physiological function of an animal, natural living and its feeling. So, um, these are the uh, things about animal welfare. So 
Why not? Now, back to my uh, topic on the stress. Uh, when you talk to people, you can ask them, how do you feel? And they can actually answer you. Uh, and they can, we can actually define, we ask them to define how stressful you are, what do you feel? But can we, because it's all subjective, but can we ask this to animals? We can't because we, we, we don't know how to, how they, we, because they can't answer us back, right? So we have to rely on the physiological and the behavior changes as a stress indicator in animals. So the animals stress often manifest in three stages. First, the recognition of the external stress by the body, which is known as a state of alarm. And secondly, the stress induced the immune response mechanism in leaving this thirst. If the stress is persist, the body will try to adapt to that new environment. But even despite with that resistance, if the body fails to cope, then it leads to the exhaustion stage. So uh, for example, this, cat here so it tried to adapt to the new environment by the by holding their hands upwards while the guns is facing towards it right so these are the adaptation of uh, uh, response to the new stress environment so what's the relationship between animal welfare and the physiological responses to stress so i found this uh, figure in the in the, from the website i cited here and it's published in 2008. And it's very uh, simple and very uh, simple to understand about the level of uh, animal welfare and the stress level. So as you can see, the animal uh, quality life may be progressive. This moment of the transition to maladaptation stage is unknown here. Wait, uh, let me get my laser point. So, but once the the tipping point here is attained, the deterioration into severely sick will occur quickly. So at this point, at this point here, the welfare condition is very poor and immediate action is necessary to be taken. So in poultry, there's a lot of stresses. We can see the heat stress, the chemical, the environment. But now in my study, I would like to focus on heat stress in poultry. So heat stress in poultry is an emerging problem in poultry production that causes huge economic losses in poultry industry. So because poultry is very vulnerable to temperature, so especially to heat stress. So when the temperature increases, the rate of panting also increases. In a heat production becomes greater when the maximum heat loss, when there's a, then the maximum heat loss, either in intensity or longer period of time. So if the body temperature increases more than 40 degrees and uh, degrees Celsius and above, the bird will die. So these are the uh, what you call the sign of heat stress. So as you know, when it becomes a, when there's a heat stress, obviously the temperature will become higher, the respiratory rate becomes higher, and there's a when, they, when there's a heat stress, there's a reduce of the feed intake. When there's a reduce of the feed intake, obviously there's a reduce of nutrient metabolism. There's a reduce no, no, of no, no, no. there's a reduce of immunity due to the reduce of the nutrient absorption to the body. And also it has some uh impartment of the intestinal integrity, which is related to why there's a reduce of feed intake. This has the, some kind of relationship. And due to the heat stress also, there'll be generation of high ROS. And due to the heat stress, it also reduces the antioxidant capacity and increase the ROS. All right. So these are the signs of heat stress. And um, next, I would like to talk about the mechanism of heat stress. So the mechanism of heat stress starts with the brain. The hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axial is a complex signaling pathway oh. from the brain to the adrenal gland that control the chicken response to stress. So in response to stress, the hypothalamus release cortical releasing hormone, which is what we call CRH, that stimulate the anterior pituitary gland that located just beneath the brain to secrete the ACPH. It will travel through the bloodstream and then to the adrenal gland that located atop 
the kidney, which are then stimulated the secretion of corticosterone. So long-term secretion of, okay, so the corticosterone is the term that we use as a, in chicken or even in rats. But for human beings, we use uh, the term of cortisol or for mammals, which means that my cortisol level is much more higher because I'm presenting, right, <laughs> compared to the participants. So long-term secretion of the cortisol is due to the chronic uh, heat stress may lead to many uh, deteriorate uh, uh, consequences such as muscle breakdown and uh, uh, reduced immunity, hormonal imbalance and protein breakdown uh, or breakdown of proteins and lipids, whereby this is related to the growth performance. So now, let me uh, explain to you what is T-shock protein. So when a living organism exposed thermal stresses, not only on thermal stresses, but any, any other stresses like an environment, uh, chemical or uh, anything, the synthesis of the most protein is retarded. But a group of highly conserved protein as a heat shock protein is rapidly synthesized. So heat shock protein is expressed in many uh, tissues and more, uh, mainly it is respond to stresses, including the heat chemical, and the physiological stress. So the induction of the HSP is essential endogenous protection mechanism. Okay, so the upregulation of this molecule will actually enhance the, still, uh, the cell stability and develop the thermal tolerance, in this case, uh, thermal tolerance during the heat stress condition. Or also, uh, in my case, the, because I'm related with the heat stress, but in any other uh, cells, it also helps to prevent the oxidation uh, breakdown or also prevent the apoptosis in uh, tissues. So, um, let me... So, HSP are classified according to the molecular weight. I'm sure you have done a lot of uh, studies and encounter what is HSP 27. There's also so many studies, you know, HSP 40, 60, 70, and 100. But all these are actually based on the molecular weight. So in my study, I would like to narrow down on HSP 70 and also 90 because they are mainly extensively studied uh, HSPs among all. So HSP 70 is actually a recent synthesized uh, polypeptide, which means that it is developed at the, uh, at the starter stage of the development and it prevents from aggregation and mediate their folding into the natural state. Whereas HSP-90 is associated with protein in the older phase of development and modifies their pattern. So these are the differences between HSP-70 and HSP-90. So uh, we have, we found that uh, in heat, uh, we found in a, this is a study by uh, our group, whereby uh, this is studied by Dr. Reza actually, he found that uh, the local chick, uh, chicken breeds in Malaysia has higher basal HSP-70 expression at normal physiological temperature. They're able to tolerate with high temperature. So this shows that these genes play a protective role uh, in cellular functions than the HSP-90. The reason why I'm saying this is that because this is also uh, has some connection with my result on the betterment of which HSP is better, HSP-70 or HSP-90. So in our case, we feel that HSP-90 uh, has the better protective role for the cellular function. So now, this comes to my study on the effect of zinc oxide nanoparticle on heat stress protein genes in broiler chicken subjected to heat stress. So now, the reason why I use the zinc oxide nanoparticle is that I would like to explore on the uh, studies on nanoparticle and the reason why I use the zinc oxide because it has the antioxidant properties. At the same time, uh, it also we I want to to try to reduce the excreta of zinc in chicken because it can reduce the uh, pollution. Right? I'm sure you have studied a lot of that. So that is why the reason I use the zinc oxide nanoparticle. Although the volume is very little, but the absorption is higher. So in uh, so the effect of zinc and oxide nanoparticle on heat stress protein genes, which are the HSP, which I choose on HSP-70 and HSP-90. So I, uh, the chickens were fed with uh, three different diets of uh, zinc oxide nanoparticle, which is the uh, uh, at three different levels of zinc oxide nanoparticles, which are 
40, 60, and 100. And compare, we compare it with the basal diet, which is 60 milligram per kg of zinc oxide, which is a commonly used uh, zinc oxide in uh, poultry industry. So on day uh, 22, the chickens were subjected to uh, different heat treatment groups, which is a normal and high ambient temperature. And uh, on day 35, on the last day, what we did is that we took uh, samples from four different segments, which is the proventricular, duodenum, jejunum, and ileum, to see the effect of these genes at to, to, to see the effect of these genes at different segments of broiler chickens induced by the normal and high embryo temperature. So we found that the full changes in uh, HSP-70 is highly increased in heat stress compared to uh, HSP-70. So this one I will go through uh, a bit faster. And uh, in jejunum and ileum, in the next slide, we found that the heat-related uh, uh, groups were not affected with HSP-70 by only the diet, including in ileum as well. And we found that the gene expression of HSP-90 was significantly upregulated in, uh, uh, in under the heat condition in chickens. So what we found here is that in heat, environment compared to HSP-90, the HSP-70 plays a better role in cellular function. So in the present study, we found the HSP-70 elevated in heat stress environment compared to the normal temperature in duodenum of broiler chicken fed with higher concentration of zinc oxide nanoparticle. So one school of thought suggested that high HSP expression, uh, expression is associated with heat stress tolerance. On the other hand, the downregulation expression of HSP could be due to the adaptation of uh, chickens to the environmental stress. So there are actually two theories. One is high and one is low. So the disparity of the HSP-70 expression varied in different parts of the gut because the severe heat stress causes pathological uh, damage to the duodenum, jejunum, and ileum because it may involve the mucosal epithelial cell exploration and villi fraction. So now, the result shows the HSP-90 expression was higher in duodenum and the glandular tissue in uh, chicken fat with highest level of zinc oxide nanoparticle. So similar, okay, now I'm going to uh, incorporate my previous study whereby uh, I published this paper on uh, in poultry science whereby I found that the, the same study actually I found that the 100 mg per kg of uh, zinc oxide nanoparticle increased the serum cortisol level. So this has actually connection with my studies here. So I hope that I can make everybody understand about the linkage of this uh, result. So when the, re when the diet containing 100 mg per kg of zinc oxide nanoparticle, it increased the serum cortisol level. So this indicate that the... Uh, this indicate that the level of the, uh, so uh, sorry, so sorry, in the previous study, there's 100 mg per kg reduced the feed intake of, of the chicken. Why? Because we found there's a low absorption of level of zinc were absorbed. So that is why in this result, we show that the uh, intestinal stress induced by the higher, uh, by HSP-90 could, uh, is high because it protects the intestinal mucosa against the severe tissue injury. So this is not related to heat stress alteration in the level of expression in the HSP-90 in jejunum or ileum, indicating that the difference is susceptibility of the individual parts of the intestine. So in my uh, previous uh, data, uh, we, as I mentioned to you, we found the supplementation of the zinc oxide uh, um, nanoparticle at 100 mg per kg, reduce the feed intake in chicken. Why? Because there's an increase in synthesis of intestinal methylunin that is associated with the reduce of zinc absorption. So since the zinc absorption is low, it may not exert the positive effect uh, on the broiler subjected to heat stress. Therefore, the upregulation of the genes as shown in this study maybe is a mechanism to combat the heat stress by protecting the cells from being exposed to stress. 
So the influence of zinc oxide nanoparticle on uh, appetite regulatory genes and the HSP genes in broiler under the hysteric condition is not completely understood. So there must be a further study is needed to understand the dynamic of this mineral on overall productivity and the health of the um, broiler chicken. So in my next uh, uh, further studies, I am also venturing into embryonic manipulation on thermal manipulation and in ovo feeding. And also, I also look into the uh, into the stress response uh, in especially in the hypothalamus area because we found that the stress response is all begins in hypothalamus and in hypothalamus, this abundance of heat stress genes related in it. So it's very important that uh, if we can and we can actually study on the stress related genes in hypothalamus. So this basically actually is a part of the brain in chicken. And this is the part that we can't see the hypothalamus actually in chicken brain, but we can actually estimate that this is where the hypothalamus is based on certain uh, technique that we actually, which I learned from uh, University of Arkansas from Professor Quenzel, that uh, we can actually capture, extract the hypothalamus and we estimate that it could be from here. So, Another way of, uh, another thing that I would like to uh, mention is that the technique of extracting the hypothalamus is actually we can cut easily the brain. But the thing is, the challenges that cutting the brain is that the brain is too fragile. So we must have the, can you see here? This is a powder form of ice. And uh, we must actually keep on uh, putting the powder form of ice onto the uh, tissues so that we can actually have the stability to cut. Uh, the segments of the brain. If you put too much, it will actually break the whole thing. So we have to put at a consistently uh, uh, little bit by little bit so that we can frozen this part and we can actually able to cut it. And um, yeah, uh, this is actually, we don't have actually much uh, diagram on the chicken brain, but uh, I saw this in one of the book uh, in the library. Uh, so I captured this picture here on the uh, hypothalamus in the, uh, from there actually, from chicken brain. And uh, yeah, this is actually Professor Quenzel. He's the one who actually uh, taught me on doing the expression. He has done extensive study on the, not on his stress, but studies in the brain hypocampus and so on. Okay, this is my uh, research team and, uh, and uh, research team and and um, this is Professor Zukipi Idrus, and he's the leader of our team. And uh, these are all my students. This is students who's doing on the uh, thermal manipulation here. And uh, here is the uh, picture of me uh, teaching my student on how to extract the hypothalamus in uh, from chicken brain. And we're also involved in many uh, industrial projects. And this is one of the projects from uh, Ben Mayer. And we're also actively involved in uh, gene expression studies in, the, in our group. So I actually, I, I am the one who actually leading for the uh, molecular work in, uh, in our research team. So, uh, so in fact, uh, while uh, doing this presentation, I also have a lot of stress. So I was thinking that I'm the, I'm the only one having the stress, but actually I realized that my son is having stress also until he come and check temperature on me, whether I have high temperature, I'm having panting or what. And later when he found that I'm completely fine, he tried to use his defensive mechanism because he's having stress as well. So, uh, so I guess that uh, that's all for now for my presentation. I hope that... Uh, uh, I have given uh, uh, understanding presentation on a heat shock protein, which is very much um, uh, interesting topic for me. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Oluwa, for giving me the opportunity. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Surya Ramia, for that uh, wonderful and beautiful presentation. In fact, I want you have a lovely boy that is trying to also follow your path, trying to measure the, your, the, the level of the stress you have during the, during the course of carrying out your research. In fact, you, um, 
that's in the presentation is a very wonderful presentation. You, you, you gave a very beautiful background concerning the work and I really enjoy and I hope every, every participant also enjoy that presentation. Before I will go to the, to the chat box to look at the questions, I want to ask a question and I, I, I saw that somebody else has uh, put that. I know zinc is, is also one of the heavy metals. If I'm not, if, I, if I'm right, and what, what, what other, uh, apart from trying to reduce stress, what can, can, can that zinc have uh, a negative effect on the growth or performance of the broilers? Uh, what was your question? I mean, zinc being, being a heavy metal. Yeah, what yeah, are, yeah, yeah. Uh, what are other effects that zinc, apart from trying to, won't that zinc have a negative impact or anything that has to do with the growth and the performance of that uh, uh, brella that you work with? Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I realized that zinc is a heavy metal. That is why I try to use nano zinc, actually. So uh, apart from, uh, apart from uh, zinc, we can actually use something that is uh, natural. Uh, to actually substitute that. But the thing is, uh, um, uh, during that time, uh, I was thinking of doing on selenium, but uh, I felt that there's a lot of studies done on nano selenium. And uh, okay. then it real it captured me is that why don't do I do on zinc? But uh, even zinc also, they have done a lot of study in relation to heat stress, but they have not studied on nano zinc actually. So that is why I was actually trying to do, but there's a lot of studies that uh, there's a lot of substitute that we can actually replace with nano zinc. Uh, in fact, it's be better that we use a natural way. If you ask me, uh, herbs or anything that can be able to reduce the stress, because uh, herbs and all this has high antioxidant level. So I think that through the antioxidant level, it may help to reduce the stress in uh, chicken. Thank you very much for that. Uh, you, uh, we have a lot of questions here for you. It means that uh, uh, the participants really enjoy your presentation. Number one question by Adekunle Shorunke is, can we have a copy? Is it possible for us to have a copy of Animal Welfare Act in Malaysia? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, actually, I must say I don't have the enemy, but maybe, uh, maybe I can... Um, Maybe I will uh, uh, contact Dr. Olua about this, and uh, well, uh, I can I can ask about it. I'm not really sure. Okay, okay. I think uh, the 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 host will provide an answer to that. No, but I, there's a, there's a lot of questions from uh, Samuel Drosharo. One of the questions is this: Have you worked on other stress or apart from heat? Have you have you worked Sorry? on other stress? Have you worked on other oh, stress? Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Apart from okay. heat. So uh yeah, uh yes, yes, we are working actually on other stresses apart from heat. Uh one of it is like transportation, and also we also work on the uh process of uh, level of stresses uh during the process of uh from the, the departure of the chicken from the farm until the slaughterhouse. So every process of it, we are going to study on the uh, stress, stress uh, external stress. For example, on transportation, uh, we actually uh, put the chickens into the lorry and then we will move about. We have uh, three variations of uh, uh, transportation length, which is about four hours and eight hours. Why? Because uh, Malaysia is a very small country. So we can go as far as we go, it's about eight hours. And as short as we go, we try to go at least for two to four hours. So that is why we use that length. And um, we, are using, uh, we are using on the transportation uh, part as well. Another one that we are, we are doing is that we are doing on the uh, response, of, uh, um, response of human contact with ducks, you see? So uh, that is also a kind of stress. So that is why uh, I think I mentioned to Dr. Olua in the beginning, saying that I actually extracted the hypothalamus from the uh, duck. So we want to see the stress level of uh, the duck 
when they interact with humans. You see, so uh, so that is another study that we are actually looking into. Okay, Th uh, thank you for that. Then why the choice of HSP seventy and HSP ninety, and okay. why the um, other? Yes. Okay, why? Because we uh, actually basically we want to see, we want to compare with the uh, ELISA kit that we have because mainly in ELISA kit we have the uh, uh, ELISA of uh, to 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 measure the ELISA corticosterone of uh, HSP seventy and ninety. So we want to relate that in our in our write up. So that is why basically we use HSP seventy and ninety. So that okay. we can have a story in writing our paper. Okay. In fact, that's um, you, uh, you've already provided some some uh, information in the your yeah. introduction. Then why? What what are other nanoparticles? Nanoparticle that can be used to reduce its stress apart from zinc oxide. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, actually, I have another one more paper, but I did not use that particular nanoparticle for heat stress. I use that to to actually reduce the uh, to reduce the um, what do you say? I use the turmeric nanoparticle, curcumin nanoparticle. Curcumin nanoparticle is a scientific name for turmeric. So I use that actually to defend the packaging of the meat for antioxidant property. So in fact, we can actually use that kind of like a nanoparticle, turmeric nanoparticle, in the as a replacer for to reduce the heat stress from zinc oxide because it has high antioxidant properties. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, a question from Dr. Olua. Why is HSP 70 and 90 the most study out of all the HSP family? Why not HSP older, 65, 60, but at least in most li uh, literature, you have more of HSP 70, why? Because I feel that uh, the trend is following the same of HSP 70 and 90 from the beginning. So because I, this is my from personal view, I also was thinking why not on HSP 27, why is every paper like, like, why they want to study on HSP 90 and 70? Maybe, maybe it's because that you want to relate that with other studies. And that is why they keep on continuing to study on HSP 70 and 90. So I feel that in future, we must study on HSP 27 and uh, HSP, other HSPs, provided there is a primus uh, allocated for HSP, other HSPs in relation to chicken. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, there is another question here from Professor Ndubusi. How does the gene HSP 70 and 90 interact with stress? The release of stress-related hormones. How does what what how does the gene interact with uh, the 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 release of uh, stress-related hormones? Actually, these genes are actually present in in the body in the living. So it's a it's a highly conserved protein. So when the when the, there's a stress there, so this particular HSP seventy is meant for the stress. You see, so it can it, it can be any any stress. It can be from the heat. It can be from the chemical. It from can be from environment. So automatically, it will actually trigger the gene of the HSP seventy and ninety. So okay. the mechanism of the uh, activation of this, I think I have to have another seminar for that because it's a very wide uh, subject of this. So basically, uh, the these genes are already present, and it will trigger once the stress is there. Okay, um, then uh, there's a question from uh, Samuel Drosharo. He said, can there be a form of collaborative research on use of brain to measure, uh, to measure bird welfare? Can there be a, a, a sort of uh, collaborative research on use of brain yeah. to measure that bird Definitely, welfare? Definitely, because um, actually, if you ask me, uh, when I want to study on the uh, extraction of uh, hypothalamus from the brain, I only have two expertise, one from Japan and one from US. And uh, not everybody has the skill of actually extracting the hypothalamus. So I was having difficulty on where to go, to Japan or to US. So I was thinking that Japan is nearer to Malaysia. I just want to go to Japan and learn the extraction method. But the thing is, in Japan, the, uh, the uh, animal egg 
uh, is quite uh, um, is quite tedious because um, we have to wait for the uh, what do you call that for the license or something like that. So it will, it will take a lot of time. So that is why I went to US and I studied about the hypothalamus extraction. And yes, uh, we can have a collaboration research because uh, because this is something a skill that I learned and I would like to explore on this skill and I, I would like to teach others as well. Okay, hey, thank you for that. Then there's uh, another question from Dr. Olua. Why the use of hypothalamus and not, and not hippocampus neurogenesis at heat stress marker in chicken? Why hypothalamus? Why the use of hypothalamus and not hippocampus neurogenesis? Okay, so uh, once I study on the hypothalamus, later I encounter a, a literature also on the hippocampus neurogenesis and it actually stressed a lot that the heat stress marker is actually in hypothalamus neurogenesis. But we have not studied on that part yet on hippocampus neurogenesis, which is actually quite new. So uh, yeah, Dr. Oluwa, I would like to study if you're doing on this also, we can have some collaboration on this part. Okay, um, there's uh, the last question here is uh, from um, Ade Kunle Shorunke and uh, can lightning be a source of stress in poetry? Lightning. Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, because when I was in Erkaso University, we also have done a lot of in relation with uh, lightning, uh, but they, they went to even more deeper on uh, dopamine on the in relation with the lightning. So, so, so much into it. And they say that it also related with the stress in poetry. So uh, to, for the answer, yes, I would say there is a lightning, uh, lightning that is source of uh, stress in poetry. And uh, the Tyson company actually uh, investing a lot on this kind of uh, study in US. Okay. Now, uh, before, before I continue on the question, I think uh, that uh, we have a question here from uh, Dr. Surya asking, how many of us have worked on heat stress or stressor on, in chicken or any other? So if you have done that, you can, you can uh, put your, your answer in the chat box. And uh, now uh, there's a question, I think you've, you've answered both from uh, Dr. Brochard. What are the side effects of zinc ox uh, oxide? In the body of the boss, what is there any side effect of that zinc oxide? Uh, yeah, basically it, it caused the environment pollution for the for the chicken based on my readings. So uh, and also and, and, and so you know that um, heavy metals, right? So obviously we want to reduce the absorption of this zinc inside the body, but at the same time it is also essential. But we try to reduce it. Yes. Hello? Yeah, hello, hello. Hello? Yes, yes, okay. can you hear me? Yes, I can, I can. Can, can, can you uh, say that again? Uh, okay. The, 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 okay, the, sure. the side effect of, uh, of zinc oxide in the body of the birds. Okay, okay. And, the, sorry, the is, yeah. sorry, before that, during the course of your study, do you observe any side effects or any anything that is negative uh, about the use of the zinc oxide uh, do, during the course of your study? Uh, no, because uh, we use a very minimal uh, usage of zinc nano, right? So the, uh, the usage is very, very minimal. In fact, I was having very much difficulty in mixing that small amount of zinc oxide, uh, zinc nano into the mixture, but we managed it. But uh, we use the recommendation of uh, the national uh, feed uh, regulation of for poultry to use 60 microgram uh, of uh, zinc oxide nanoparticle. So we didn't see any side effect of it. Okay. Um, there's another question here. Que question kept uh, rolling in for you. And uh, there's one here. Don't you think killing the birds to harvest hypothalamus is, is invasive? Then, it, after answering that, the, how long does it take uh, to harvest hypothalamus from a chicken? 
So um, answer the first one. <laughs> so, um, uh, well, uh, I would always say that uh, we kill one, uh, we kill 10 birds to save 100 birds. So I think it's okay in our <laughs> research <laughs> to do that. Because um, or else we, 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 we want to help the chicken actually, right? So we need to understand the physiological aspect of the chicken. So we need to kill them in order to save the thousands and the millions of the birds. So I think it's okay. 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 But at the same time, we should not kill a lot. I mean, yes. like uh, for, for molecular work, I will never suggest my students to take like from one treatment group, we take 10 or 20. No, I would take about only maximum four. That's it. So I'm not a very cool person. I hope, uh, I hope who is this person here? <laughs> How long does it take? How long does it okay. take to harvest? How long does it take to harvest the hypothalamus? It depends on the person expertise here. So if you ask uh, uh, another professor from uh, another university, Virginia Tech University, he said that he take about 1.5 minutes only to extract. But if you ask me, it's kind of impossible because the chicken brain is too fragile. So you must be very careful while you're cutting the brain because once it's taken out from the, from the uh, skull of the chicken, so uh, we're having difficulty in uh, in uh, get in not getting the brain to get melted, or else we don't know where to cut. So we have we must always keep the brain in a very semi-solid state so that we can cut easily the segments. Okay, thank you. So uh, I would say uh, that in my case, I'll take about like uh, two or three minutes. Okay, good. So so it's on the person handling it. So we have we have. One more question for you. And um, the question is, can the use of Tama manipulate uh, manipulation, Tama ma manipulation during in the incubation of eggs impair the welfare of the birds later in life? Uh, this one, I would take it as a, my hypothesis. <laughs> because um, we have done, uh, other literatures also, they have done that uh, not many, very limited, saying that the thermal manipulation able to, to uh, improve the uh, condition of uh, stress, especially the heat stress in chicken in the later stage. So to answer for the question, I think that it's better for me to actually see directly on my experiment and hopefully we can, I hope to publish this paper soon to answer for this question. Okay, sorry, just list very, very last question. There's one. No, no, question man, it's okay. It's okay. Yo, it's just, no, no, no. We are, we are, we are, we, we, you know, we have a lot of questions, but we just need to. Now, uh, from Professor Ndubuisi, he said in one of uh, uh, studies where zinc was used to induce molting in laying birds. Now, they observed that a high dose of zinc oxide caused greenish coloration on the liver. Now, I now said, though we are yet to decipher the, the cause, can you, can, can you speak on that? Because it's a high, high dose of zinc oxide causes uh, greenish coloration on the liver. Is there any link between the high dose and the effect on the the uh, internal organ or the performance of the birth? Okay, uh, for this question, I would say that is back to the basic. Because in my case, I use the broiler chicken. So the broiler chicken, the feeding is only for 35 days. But in okay. laying, you must understand that the, the, compar the comparison with the, uh, what do you call that? The uh, period of breeding is for one and a half years. So imagine the dosage of the zinc was keep on putting it every day for one and a half years, obviously I feel that there is a high dosage of zinc oxide there. So in my opinion, I think that at the point of certain point of time during the production or something like that, we can able to reduce the zinc oxide maybe. So uh, maybe this could be another study that can be done. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Surya. Uh, Ramia for that beautiful, wonderful, and very educative uh, presentation. Uh, I also want to thank all our participants for, 
for uh, their time. May I hand over to the host, Dr. Olua Jean Yasiri, popularly called Dr. Olua. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, Dr. Surya, for that wonderful presentation. We really learned a lot from your work. And thank you, Dr. Matthew, for moderating her session. I hope the questions are not too much. <laughs> so no, not at all, not at all. Don't worry. So at this I time, we, more actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At this time, we want all participants, if you are interested, to turn on their videos. We want to see your faces and let's interact and let's network with ourselves in the in maybe the next ten minutes before we end the program. So, um, uh, so you're welcome, Dr. Dele. I can see you, Dr. Abiaja. You can raise up your hand. You. Indicate by raising up your hand so we can. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Dr. Abiaja. <laughs> Yeah, Dr. Abioja, please go on. Yeah. Oh, what do you really want from me? No, you Hi, raised uh, up your Dr. hand. I thought Abioja. you wanted to make a comment. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not making comments. I thought you said we should raise our hand as you are calling our names. Hello. Uh, Dr. Abioja? Yes. Hi there. I'm doing fine. <laughs> Sorry. Um. Uh, I have forwarded your email. To, yes, yes. Uh, Professor Zul, so I hope that he will contact you sooner. Yes, I'm, I'm still expecting him. Oh, I see, because no he's problem. quite busy. Very okay, busy. Okay, it's all right. It's all right. No problem. Thank you so much. Who wants to make a comment or to ask any other question to interact with our presenter? On mute, yeah. Can I make a comment? Yeah, sorry for, yeah, okay. do that. <laughs> sorry, sorry for coming back again. Uh, I, 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 I also want to, I think uh, in this tro tropical part, in this our, our region, the tropical region, I think uh, we, we need to do more of, of, of uh, each stress uh, protein because the stress, the heat stress affect a lot of things. I work with uh, chicken and I and I noticed that that are that are a lot of effects uh, caused by stress, especially heat, because during the 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 uh, hot season, you see a lot of variation in eggs and performance, and I think. But uh, a question being asked before about why people use more of AE shock 70 and 90. I, I, I think it may be due to the uh, uh, polymorphism observed in that protein. Other may not be polymorphic. Other may not have any, any effect. About maybe HSP 90 and 70 are highly polymorphic and they, they 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 have been used as uh, a, uh, a marker to select for resistance to this. I think um, that would be my my contribution and submission. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but Surya, uh, you yeah. know the issue of stress, uh, stressors, and things are more of the negative, you know, welfare, welfare aspect. Do you have an idea whether this brain region that you're looking into could be used as a marker for a positive welfare? Yeah, yeah, definitely, uh, uh, Dr. Oluwa. I, I, I really hope that I could find that in the hypothalamus. That is why I'm rushing for that. But what to do? My hands are tight due to the pandemic. <laughs> So we, there are some, uh, they, from the hypothalamus, we could have some markers to indicate positive yes, welfare, yes, right? Yes. yes. Uh, do you have any reference to such material, uh, any literature on that? Uh, on hypothalamus? Yes, I can, I can forward to you. Okay, on positive welfare and the hypothalamus. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Is there any other person that wants to make a comment? So in Malaysia, uh, um, oh, it, it should be uh, how 
much of uh, maybe loss or economic loss do you have uh, arising from fish trades in, in chicken? Uh, actually, we don't have a proper report on that, but when we talk to the uh, industry people, yes, they say that the heat stress is actually a very uh, severe problem in the industry, actually, because of the condition. Although they put the mechanism of like cooling effect, this and that, it will actually incur more costs yeah. rather than, uh, you know, uh, so, so it's, it's quite uh, severe, the cost, the, 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 temp, uh, the heat stress in Asia. Yeah. So, but with the issue of uh, climate change, definitely uh, the intensity and the duration of this um, high temperature would be more on the high side compared to what we have been having before. So I think uh, a lot still need to be done in this area as regarding ways and the methods of uh, alleviating heat stress. Uh, but come to think of it, you know, in some developing countries that cannot afford the use of ventilations and yeah. how it's, it's going to be a big challenge. Mm, correct. So the only thing that we can actually depend is to the nutrition. Nutrition, yeah. Yeah. The nutrition. Mm. But um, uh, I want to ask uh, questions to, to your research team. Um, because I, I'm sure that the temperature in Nigeria is much more uh, hotter compared to Malaysia. So uh, I'm sure the, uh, you must have some kind of local breeze that actually able to resist the temperature over there. So do you have any idea of using the selection of that particular genes that resist to heat stress and then try to uh, put it into the breed, commercial breed in uh, Nigeria? Any studies on that? What I can say is that uh, from the chickens, we have two major genes. Uh, the major one is the naked neck gene that has been proven to help uh, thermoregulation for the best to be able to adapt to a hot environment. But uh, in my university, we we sometimes in Dr. Weto, is it 2018 that we registered the FUNAP Alpha, which is a slow grain broiler. It's uh, a breed of broiler that was uh, like the improved from the native chicken. So they have um, uh, more of the tropical, you know, genetic makeup. And we believe that this uh, breed will still be able to perform better under this tropical environment compared to the exotic ones that we have. But we, it's, it's, it's a new breed, it was registered in 2018. So Research is still uh, ongoing on this breed to see how we can adapt it to our region. Dr. Weto, do you want to say something about that as well? <laughs> I hope he's not there. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Do you want to add to um, the FUNAB Alpha? Yes, yes. In uh, like what uh, do, uh, Dr. Olua just said. That we 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 just registered that in 2018. Apart from the naked neck uh, chicken, we also have the frizzle feather, uh, the the uh, tarsi scattered feather, and uh, they are coping very well under even heat stress. So um, and they are they are a good breed that can uh, do well in this tropical. And we've been trying to also introduce it to a lot of farmers and they are going for 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 that at least that can that can be a good um, like what you suggested we will try um we are we are already were working with dr lua and and her, her group we are uh, we've been working to together on how to uh, carry out all those experiments using the funab alpha chicken genotype thank you very much Ma. Yeah, actually, sometimes last year when I applied for the, the Maria Curie Fellowship with Tom, you know, Tom Smulders, I yeah, wanted yeah, yeah. to look, I wanted to compare the commercial broiler and this uh, FUNAP Alpha, subjecting, the, subjecting them to moderate heat stress and taking the brains to look out for hypocamp 
Paul neurogenesis, but uh, the, the fellowship didn't work. So we are still looking for means to see if this breed actually would be able to perform better compared to the exotic ones. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I have one, uh, one question, please. Yes. Okay, sorry. It's okay, it's okay, don't worry. <laughs> My husband is taking uh, care I, of I think it. I, I just want to ask, apart from the use of, yes, uh, apart, apart from the use of the hypothalamus, uh, do you, during the course of your study, do you observe any behavioral response in, re, in, in respect to the effect of zinc, zinc oxide nanoparticles? Do you, can there be any a phenotypic index that you can use apart from the hypothalamus. You mean the behavior changes? Yes. Um, Did you notice if those uh, heat related behaviors were suppressed uh -huh. in the broilers that you uh, gave the zinc uh, oxide nanoparticles? Uh, Actually, uh, maybe I did not notice during that time, but uh, yeah, sorry, I did not notice during that time because we, we, we feel very stressful while handling the chicken because, because it's a heat-related stress uh, studies, right? So when you want to handle the chicken, we really need to make sure the chicken is not stressed while being handled. So, so that is why maybe we did not look at this part. Maybe... Maybe in my uh, future project with my students, I will try to include this, the behavioral studies on this. Yeah, you can just use some cameras to have a record of the behavior. You ah, don't need see, to handle. See. Yeah, you don't need to handle. Oh. You just need I some see, cameras see. to capture that. Okay, so okay. thank you very much. Thank you for, for your time. I know it is uh, almost 9 p.m. in Malaysia. Sorry okay. for keeping Everything you awake. And here. thank Everything. you so much. And I also want to use this opportunity to thank all the participants for, for their time. And I want to believe that we've all enjoyed today's presentation and we have learned one or two things. So have a, a nice day. And uh, nice night if you are going to bed. <laughs> okay. So I would like to say bye for now and see you right. in two bye. weeks' time. Bye bye. Right. Thank you, Dr. Olua. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye.